What's up, everybody? It's Matt from Rocky's War Room. Uh, today, <clears throat> I'm going to show you guys uh, my battle board that I'm building for Test of Honor. Uh, this will be going with my Test of Honor series. Um, it's pretty simple, um, pretty straightforward uh, table, I guess you can say, or battle board. Uh, what I did was, is uh, uh, Test of Honor is played on a 3x3. Three three. And the area starting here, going across and towards the back, that's all 3x3. Three three. Uh, I added a little space here, and I purposely bought 1x3s uh, instead of, uh, or well, they're 1 by 2 and 3 quarter. Uh, so there would be a space to fit the Test of Honor cards, dice, and things of that nature right inside the slot. Now this is a, just a little bit too long and I think that's because it expanded this way and I'm going to cut it. But for the most part down there it's right. I just got to cut a straight line this way with my hot foam cutter and a card should be able to fit right in here. It fits all the way around. <laughs> but uh, either way cards will fit right there. And I'm going to build this board uh, with the back edge in mind. Um, of cutting it straight and then uh, the back will be painted this will all be painted a brown color along with this right here so all the cards and things are easy to see um, so I built a frame a wooden frame out of little one buys and they were four foot long and then I cut a piece of foam that was uh, Oh, three and a half inches is the length for cards, so I did uh, three and three quarter inches. So I did about, I think it was 43 and a half or something like that. But about four inches over on one side and on the other. That way there's two players can keep their cards and they'd be able to play on the board there uh, and have all their stuff right where they needed it. So, <clears throat> so I've already begun the pattern. Uh, after I made the frame, I used screws and wood glue to uh, glue it all together. And <clears throat> the next thing I did, get a shot of the whole thing here. The next thing that I did was as I cut the foam out and I made it a tight fit and I squeezed the foam in there. I pushed it down on a flat surface, of course, and just pushed it down inside. And then I ran a bead of uh, Loctite glue here and I put some on the inside on the outsides of the foam there I put some uh, some wood glue or some tie bond uh, so it stay glued against this right here as well so I tried to make I put this bead in here because I want to make it uh, stick on the top to where this doesn't move and I did it on the side so where it doesn't move at all um, it's a very lightweight material so once you glue it down it's not going to go anywhere <laughs> at all so I was going to use Gorilla Glue, but uh, Gorilla Glue expands when it dries, and it expands pretty significantly. So I uh, I chose to use the uh, tie bond instead. It's a <clears throat> it's a PVA glue, but it's more designed for holding wood. But it holds foam very well, and it doesn't expand as much as Gorilla Glue. So after I did that, I glued it all in. I started adding the pieces to it. Now, you can see my dirty game room. Uh, now, these pieces here, uh, I laid out so I could have that card and dice space on either side here. And to cut that off, to let everybody know that this is the 3x3 three three out here. Uh, also, to give it some height. Um, you know, I'm going to have a cliff face going across this whole entire front. As you can see, I started building this up. Um... And I need a corner piece in there, which we're going to do tonight. And uh, I'm going to kind of carve this just a little bit more of a, uh, with a hot uh, foam knife, just a little bit more curved either here to go along with that right there. Probably a notch to go along over to the steps there. Um, I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. I'll, I'll just go with it. Um, trying to keep this as, as organic as possible. I don't like... I like making a small layout, but uh, 
at the same time, I just kind of let it go. I just, I, wherever my mind takes me in the moment, that's how I'm going to build terrain. And that's how I'm going to do this. Uh, I, I, I figured it, uh, it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, I laid this out. I glued it down with some more Loctite, just like I did for the foam around the base. And then uh, I added some height over here with this hill, which is going to be, which is going to have cherry blossom trees. But I think I'm going to keep those separate and put them on a separate base for ease of travel. Um, I am making my own cherry blossom trees uh, forever and ever and ever. I could not find a cherry blossom flock, and I actually found some. Scenic Express makes it. And you can get it on Hobbylink, H-O-B-B-Y. L I N K dot com. Uh, I believe they're out of Atlanta. Uh, it hasn't come in yet, but that's okay. It shipped Monday, so it'll probably be here Wednesday. Uh, they'll probably they'll be here by the next video, which uh, I'll show you how I'm making the trees. But uh, just moving on, I added some height, and what we're going to do is Woodland Scenics makes a uh, product of uh, some rock molds, and let me show you what. <clears throat> Like these right here. Uh, these are rock molds um, that you get from Woodland Scenics. Uh, this one's a base rock mold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to mold these with the plaster. And it's higher, as you can see, but that's okay. We can actually, with the plaster, you can cut it down and uh, or break them apart and make them fit the other direction. Um, or use these here and that orientation and just kind of making rock faces on the fronts of the foam here. So there'll be a rock face here and there will be a rock face across over there with a gentle slope over here or not gentle but maybe a steep slope right here uh, just kind of going up into that area over there and uh, these will be rock steps which are carved into the rock itself. So I might do some small rocks right here, like like these little bitty guys right here or something like that to uh, fill that in. So I've got several of these molds. i got probably about six of them. They're all different kinds, uh, which they'll all work. Any of them will work. I mean, I've got a variety of things to use on this board. Like I got some latex rubber. And uh, this stuff right here makes molds out of rocks out of your garden. So, uh, for the bigger rocks, rather than going out and uh, getting more or buying a bag of rocks, the rocks I got outside in my backyard are all, they're just not going to work. They're not gritty enough. Um, so, I'm going to make a few rock molds and repeat some rocks and stuff with the plaster with this stuff here. This stuff's great. This is making for, for making trees, too. If you're making wire trees, you cover it in the latex rubber to fill in all the holes, and you just paint it. So... That's a good, uh, good, good option that I have. And then I bought some, some more, but uh, I figured it's going to take me uh, at least a bottle of the mid-tone to, uh, to flock this with. And I also got some material that I've been using on my miniatures, my samurai miniatures, to base them with. But uh, we have a a mid-tone, which is just your normal grass. I believe that's the mid-tone. Let's see. Yeah. This is the mid-tone. This is the shading area. And this here is the light tone. It's a blended green grass turf, but it's real. It's a lot brighter than the other stuff. Um, so what I'll do is, is I'll put this on, kind of spattered about. I'll put this where the rock areas are and underneath the trees where there's shade from the sun. And then all around we'll get the fine turf green grass, and then we'll take some burnt grass, which I already have plenty of uh, color to uh, accent everything. And then I've got something called meadow grass, which is a static grass that has little bitty wood chip barks in it that I've been using on the bases. So I'm going to incorporate this that on this board too, so they kind of fit together, um, obviously. And then the last thing I have done so far is I've carved out <clears throat> uh, with a knife. I'm going to be cleaning this up with some sandpaper, leveling it out and stuff like that. A little makeshift river. 
Now I have a bridge coming that uh, will more than enough go across this uh, because this right here is where the bridge I want it to be here and the Tory gate's gonna sit right here. So we'll have the bridge right here and uh, it'll be going over here. This is about four and a half inches. The bridge stops at six, I believe it is. And so it'll go over right here. I got some makeshift dirt roads that I'm going to put right here. They're not really necessarily going to look like roads. They're going to be kind of like dirt paths that I'm going to make with soil uh, from Woodland Scenics. But, uh, but tonight, uh, I get to try out my brand new tool. It's a Rocky's War Room, which I've never used before, but I've heard so much about, is my foam knife. Uh, this one's from Foam Factory. It's a hot wire knife. And what I'm going to do with this, is I'm going to take this piece right here, and we're going to fit a small cornered piece going from here to here. Uh, I, th I think it looks too angle ang angly, uh, like with a 90. So I'm thinking that I'm thinking I'm going to cut a piece that's going to fit right here. So to do that, oh, you couldn't see what I was looking at. Here we go. Let me get the camera up. Okay. So I'm going to fit a piece right in here with this piece right here. So I'm going to take the straightest side that I can see with the straightest side I can see there. Here's the factory cut. And here's the break. And it's actually more level than the, with this side. So I'm going to take the messed up side, I'm going to press it against this side over here, and we're going to make some marks uh, with our marker here. So <clears throat> let me get you in closer so you guys can see what I'm, I'm doing here. So you see where my steps end right here, which I already kind of have a mark there. And by pushing this in, and I don't have to worry about how far, and I really push it that much. Uh, because, or where I mark it, because this is too thick to do a step up. So this is going to actually, I'm going to cut the piece, and then I'm going to cut it in half, and I'm going to cut that piece in half so it kind of looks like a step shelf, you know, um, going right here. So I could, I know it stops right here, so I'm going to make a cut right here, but I could make this go all the way to here, or I could make it go all the way to here, uh, or I could cut it off as short as right there. Um, but in order to do the idea that I'm thinking of, I think I need to make it longer. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to curve it like this. Because that would be a heck of a lot easier to uh, put, put rock faces on with uh, the molds that I got. So uh, we're going to cut that and I'll be right back to show you guys. All right, there we go. Got a cut. Uh, I'm learning that uh, you got to go a little bit slower uh, with this high density foam than you do the normal foam. So let's check it. It doesn't fit perfectly, but that's because we got a piece sticking out there. So we're going to cut that off. You really don't have to cut it. You could really just rip it off. But let's fit it in there. Voila, perfect. That'll work. Now, the only thing I can see is there's a gap here, right? So, how do we fix that gap there? Well, that's because this is sticking out and that's sticking in. So, we're going to grab our hot knife. Turn it on, let it heat up for a second. I'm going to cut this down here. Just a little bit to kind of even it out. Now really at this point it's kind of just melting it more than it's doing anything. Uh, so there we go. Make sure you turn that off. Get that off of there. And that kind of straightened it out just a little bit. We're going to do the same thing to our piece that we cut here. Just going to take a little bit off the top here. Just to kind of even it out. Whew, this stuff stinks. 
I'd recommend wearing a mask of some kind if you got it. Uh, it cuts very nicely. See, now we got a nice tighter fit than we had before. So, whew, you get high off this stuff. <laughs> Just be very careful when you're using a hot knife. Um, when you're wiping off the hot part, you need to wipe off or clean it off with a paper towel or a towel of some kind that you want to throw away um, when it's hot. So, set that there. So, we got a nice piece to fit there. Um, just a very minimal, small gap right there compared to what we had. So, we're going to go ahead and tie this down. So, I'm just going to put some of this uh, corsets. Always cut when you use a knife. Always cut away from yourself. I learned that in Boy Scouts when I cut half my finger off. <laughs> well, just the tip of the finger. So, we know it wants to go here. So we're gonna, we know we gotta put some PVA on the bottom here. Or some wood glue tie bond. We need to put some on the back here. We need to put some on this back right here. And you don't have to be neat with the gluing. Just kind of get it set in there. Push down on it and get some weight on it with my plaster bowls. And then you just want to wipe the tip off so you don't have that situation that just happened to me where it gets clogged with a hard piece of glue at the top. Close it off, wipe the glue off, then you have it ready to go for the next time. So, I also, um, uh, the reason, another reason why I'm doing this, just to show you guys, I have a tall pagoda that's going to go right here. Uh, it's going to be kind of the centerpiece of this board. Um, I also have a tall tower, watchtower, that I'm going to put right here. But I'm not going to attach them to the board. I want to make them all, you know, removable. Uh, be able to move them around. That sort of thing. So. But yeah, if you, as you can see, you, you, we got some gaps here. Um, that's easy to fix. I can just take one of my scrap pieces. Like this one here. You know. Break it off. And pop it right back here or behind here and there you go perfect fit right there as a matter of fact I I think we should just glue that right now heck yeah so which side went in first this side here yeah that was it so we're gonna pop some PVA on that we're just gonna go ahead and stick it right in Put it on both sides so you get contact with both sides of the foam. Stick that in there. That'll kind of tighten things up. And then, uh, I guess, no, we can leave that like that because we'll put some, we'll put some, uh, oh, um, some sculpt -a mold That's what I'm going to be using to put on all this is sculpt a mold um, uh, over that and that'll be a neat little rock feature right there another thing I like to do just to kind of smooth this out and make sure it's not going to go anywhere is I like to put right where it's it's seamed together um, it's an extra step you don't have to take it but uh, it, I, I find that it makes a smooth transition you just kind of wipe it off And it kind of seals it from uh, any material getting underneath it as well. There we go. And I'll just kind of glue the end together so when I put stuff on top of it, it should stick a lot better. So, there you have it. 
Oh, so we got that down and this piece right here, this corner piece right here, I made sure this was good and in place. This, this tie bond stuff holds great. Um, I was going to kind of make this a rock feature sloping down, but I think I want to step this down right here. Um, maybe into a hill of some kind. I kind of wanted to maybe, because I cut this piece here, you know, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe I should just leave this alone right here. Maybe just leave it the way it is. Um, like a nice sloping hill right there and then cover it with the sculpta mold maybe do something along the lines of this right here i could do that that kind of looks neat different uh because you know in in I, I keep thinking about in in nature um nature is different all over the place you know uh, there's lots and lots of things are broken up you know they're broken up real good so I'm thinking that like doing things like this on the rock face, maybe cutting this in half or something, or just cutting it a little bit lower will give me a shelf, you know, going down, you know, so that'll kind of break it up. Um, you know, instead of being so uniform, you know, so uh, we'll think about that. Um, I think that looks pretty cool, but we'll think about that. Now over here, I said I wanted to kind of round this off. I still want to do that, but I don't want to go so deep with the hot knife that um, I'm cutting through the main board. If I do, that's fine. You can always put filler in it to fill it up. But we're going to mark a spot here so, so we can get a different look, you know, so it's not everything's the same and <clears throat> so we can kind of break it up like nature does. So I'm going to start... I'm going to start by doing this right here. That looks boring, so we'll cut it out up here. Hmm. So maybe just do an indentation, or maybe, maybe bring it out over to here and then back up. Maybe. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe. Cause that would look funny next to the steps if I were to just stop it right here and come back. Maybe I make it more fluid and bring it out right here at the corner of the steps. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. All right, let me get the hot knife ready. Get it nice and hot. Test it. Yep, it's ready. So we're gonna go nice and easy and slow right on our line. I know my hand's in the way here, but I'm trying to keep it as straight as I possibly can, and my right hand is better. Give this a wipe off. And let's see if I can do it this way. So I'm just going to kind of do the top here where I want to go. I've got to keep wiping this thing off. I have a Woodland Scenics one, and I think I like it better. I had really good things about this one, but you really only want to do it a little bit at a time. What I'm doing is, is I'm only cutting off probably down to about halfway and all the way on some parts, just to kind of break it up a little bit because I'm going to break these pieces off. So they kind of have jagged edges and stuff like that. Um, kind of break up nature. Oh yeah, man, I gotta go slower with this thing or something. There we go. I 
broke through, ladies and gentlemen. We'll wipe this off, get it clean, keep performing surgery here until we got it all. I'm having trouble right here. So, make sure our hot, hot knife is off. It's not touching anything. I'm just going to take my knife here. I was going to take my knife here. I'm going to scour it. Make sure we're all the way down. Oh, I went all the way down. Okay. There we go. I went too far on that one. Now, we're going to finish this off here. You always want to test it. There we go. It's ready to go. We're going to sculpt this right here. Cut this right out. Hot knife is off. There we go. See how easy that is to break once you kind of scour it with this. You can just break it off. And it kind of gives you a, a broken texture look already. Turn it back on and get this last little bit here. Wipe it off first. There we go. Get the little stragglers. One last piece here. Just doesn't want to come out of there. Wipe this off while it's still hot. <coughs> <coughs> and then we'll use our hobby knife. And there we go. There you have it. Now, that looks a heck of a lot more broken up and not so linear. Um, uh, than its previous, what it looked like. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our sandpaper to it and just kind of sand it down. Get all the loose scraggles. Because there will be some. And I like to go over the edge. Now what I'm using here is a coarse sponge sander, a heavy coarse. Um, the reason for that is, is because this stuff is a lot easier to do with heavy sand with heavy coarse paper or heavy coarse sponge like this one than it is, say, your normal uh, just regular sandpaper. This is easier to hold. And, and it goes really quickly. And then that's smooth right there. And the only thing left to do is to kind of sand down the slope and give it a quick vacuum to get all the dust up because you don't want to be breathing that in. And uh, I'll spare you the vacuum noise and vacuum and I'll be right back to show you where I'm at. All right, I zoomed in to show you guys. Uh, what it looks like. There you go. So now that looks a heck of a lot more broken up than it did just with a straight line. Uh, so I always, always try to vacuum every, after I've sanded because there's such little particles. You don't want somebody messing with that or breathing that in. So not only that, it cleans up your surface and uh, 
gives you kind of a look of what you're looking at here. So these are going to be cliff faces. So I'm going to put those molds right here. Um, you know, the rocks and things like that. And after they're all filled in with sculpt mold uh, and everything, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, make divots to fit it around the rocks that I put on the faces. So honestly, I think the, this one here, I'm just going to cut up here because I think putting rock faces, it's kind of at an angle. Um, I don't know. We'll see. But that's basically what I was going for there. So, oh, now it's time to make the decision on this side over here. Do I want to keep this? Maybe I'll just make a line here. It's nonlinear and cut that with a hot knife to make it kind of fit it better. Yeah, I'll do that. Got the hot knife. There we go. And we'll just take a slice out of this here. You can hear it. There we go. And it is done. The little stringers. Darn it. <laughs> They're floating around everywhere. Turn the hot knife off. All right. Now we're going to hang on to that piece, but we need to get rid of those stringers. Dang it. Oh, let's get this out of the way. How dare you get in the way of the board? Oh, just kind of leaving that there. So, let's see what we're looking at. We need to do another cut with this. Hmm. Well, I need to round this off a little bit more, don't I? Let's do that right quick. That doesn't look very mountainy. Maybe we'll go down with it too. All right. There we go. That already looks better. Um, I'll cut this little piece off here. Yeah. Let's see what we're looking at there. So now it looks pretty good. That kind of breaks it up. You get the sculpt mold on there and put some rock faces on there. It'll look pretty good. I think I'm going to leave that just like that and glue her down. Let's make sure our hot knife is off, cleaned off. All right. Now the hot knife is off. We can glue this piece in. Now, you're gonna open the glue there. Oh, come on. I wiped it off and everything. Stuck again. There we go. All right. There we go. Get some glue on that side. Get some glue down here where it's going to glue onto the ground. You get drips. It's okay. Sticker on there. And like I like to do to seal it up, I'm going to run some glue down there around the bottom here. There we go. Just to kind of bring it all together. Make sure it all stays where it's supposed to. Especially when you're starting putting the rock faces on. It's got to stay. Because if not, you're going to be left with, you know, loose pieces. Trying to glue pieces to loose pieces. And you don't want that. So we're going to smooth that on there. And a good way to hold this in position... Believe it or not, I'll grab one. Uh, barbecue skewers. If I can get them out. 
had to put them away because the kids like to play with them. But you just take a barbecue skewer and your desired piece you want to stay, you stick it in there and into the next piece just like that and it holds that piece against to where it's being glued at. Now, you don't have to actually take this out. You could actually cut it off right here once it's dry, of course. But that way it keeps it, for the most part, where it's supposed to be. Um, another way you could do it is putting one at an angle and it won't move. It's probably better. I see it's moving now. That'll hold that against the wall. <clears throat> and what we'll do is when this is all dry, I'll just cut these pieces off right here. Yeah, there we go. So now it's flush up against right where it should be. I gotta get some glue on that seam over there. It's a little bit messy. I get messy with this stuff. Um, it's all going to be covered up with uh, sculpt -a mold and uh, stuff like that. So it doesn't have to be precise. It just has to be there. It just has to live there. So, all right. So now that broke up my table. Um, got a few pieces in. We cut a side over here right here so that looks good so we'll set up for the long shot here so now that's very different from what I started with because uh, it was straight here and it was straight there and now I cut into that that's one example of being able to uh, break it up I put a piece in the corner there to kind of put a bigger shelf up top up there I was going to step it down. I actually uh, uh, might still do that. I don't know. I can cut that rest of that with a hot knife at about the same height as that piece I stuck in there to kind of make, make it gradual or just cut a piece out or something like that to kind of make it flow better. Or I just might leave it there for a lot more room for models to uh, be put up there or houses or what have you. So um, uh, to be honest with you guys, I don't have a name for this yet. Uh, I don't know the direction it's going um, until it's finished. <laughs> um, but I think it's pretty cool. I know I'm going to have a pagoda up there. And these steps are going to go up and towards like a stone path towards the pagoda. Um, I'm still trying to decide if I need to make a brick base for the pagoda. Because you see a lot of pagoda castles and things like that. Um, uh, in, in Japan at the time and they had these stone fortress wall like looking things and then a pagoda put on top of it so yeah I haven't decided if I'm going to do that it depends on how much time I have uh, but for the most part um, I think I'm pretty happy with uh, with just that I think the next step we need to do on this board is to finish sculpting the river um, or, you know, the waterway, stream, whatever you want to call it. I need to kind of take a bit in my big saw and kind of flatten it out a little bit. Um, I'm going to use the Woodland Scenics deep pour water to do it. Um, they normally suggest, or they suggest a flat surface to put it on or put it in, but honestly, you could use... I mean, I've used their water effect stuff before, and it could be bumpy all at once. Just kind of adds depth in some places, and that way you're not trying to create depth with paint. You're actually creating depth with depth. So um, <clears throat> we're going to fill it with sculpt mold and then we're going to put a um, either a Mod Podge, or we'll just buy the, the Woodland Scenics you know, uh, pre-water stuff to seal it up, but we're going to make sure we seal it up with either watered down PVA or PVA or Mod Podge mat or something because I'm going to put rocks in here and things like that 
um, to kind of make it more realistic. And then we're going to do some rapids and then a little bit some, a few rapids or waves, um, with the direction, the way the water's going. So the water's going to go this way. So from right to left, not left to right. <laughs> I think that'll work out good. So uh, <clears throat> I have until November 11th to get this done. And today is September 8, 19th. So uh, it's coming along good. Um, but uh, the next step, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of cut out some of these rough areas in here and um, get it ready for uh, sculpt mold. Because once I finish this riverbed here, the next step for me is going to be laying the rocks. Oh yeah, I'm going to get the rock molds going, laying the rock molds up, and then covering this with sculpt mold. So um, I have a big old box of it. should be more than enough to do this. Um, I was originally going to do it with filler or uh, drywall mud, but um, <clears throat> I, I, I saw the sculpt the mold stuff uh, at the store, and I've heard a lot of people have used it and had very good results uh, with it as well. So I figured, why not try it? Uh, we'll try it with this project. I probably should try it with something else to experiment with it first, but um, it, it's real lightweight, and I think it'll work out fine. I think it'll work out just fine because filler has got some weight to it, and plaster doesn't have as much weight if the filler does in, in when I'm picking up stuff. So, I mean, in, in my experience, uh, I made this hill over here with filler, this one here out of foam and filler, and it's kind of heavy now, heavy now. Uh, that's for my science fiction stuff, but <clears throat> that was kind of like my guinea pig and it worked out great. The rocks look wonderful. Um, the paint's going on good. Uh, I have to finish it. Um, I kind of got sidetracked, sidetracked with this job here, job, I call it job, this, uh, board, I'm super excited for it, so, uh, we're gonna see where it goes, see where it leads us, but, uh, I'm gonna carry on leveling out this, uh, this little riverbed, and, and then, uh, I'm gonna, uh, pour some, pour some molds for, all the rocks. Uh, I'll do a video on that and show you guys uh, how I do it. Uh, I'm going to use these right here. These are uh, really nice from Woodland Scenics. They they pop down and pop back up easy for storage, which is great. I can just kind of hang them up. <clears throat> you got a small one. You got a big one. They're real nice for mix mixing plaster or what have you. Um, we're going to use those when we use the sculpt mold and, uh, we're pouring the rocks. So, uh, my next video will be me pouring rocks and, uh, showing you guys the progress I made on the riverbed here. Um, I'm actually thinking about just leaving it alone the way it is and, uh, making a very shallow -y, you know, a little shallow pass, creek, what have you, uh, Shallow enough to where you could possibly walk across it, like forward across it if you had to with miniatures. Um, just to make things a little bit less complicated. So, uh, there's only one problem I see. Um, there's a little bit of a gap right here at the end of the river here on the inside of the wood there. I'm going to have to fill this with uh, uh, pieces of foam before I put the plastic mold on there and... And uh, same with over here, maybe fill it with some PVA, make sure it's good and tight and sealed up against the wall up here with the uh, sculpt the mold. Um, and the water should hit wood to wood. So that's the plan. Uh, and these outside pieces here are going to get painted a real nice brown um, along where the cards are kept. So only a few things to do. Um, we're going to go pour some more. Uh, uh, rock molds. We're going to cut with a foam knife that side over there so the cards will fit. Um, we'll get that all taken care of and hopefully you'll see me further along in the next video. So I appreciate you guys for sticking with me, watching my video. Please subscribe. Uh, if you enjoyed this, uh, tell a friend, spread the word. I'd really appreciate it. Um, if, uh, you know, hit that like button, 
Leave me some comments. Tell me, guys, what you think. What you think else I should add to this board. If you think there should be a you know, two-headed werewolf sitting over there on the mountain somewhere, please tell me. Leave it in the comments below, okay? I'd really appreciate it. If you, if you have any pointers or tips or things that I, oh, what else I could do to make this, this board stand out, I'd appreciate it as well. Um, but last but not least, ta-ta!